Well, we, we hope for victory. We hope for victory. Yeah, All right, Victor Aya, you're welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, then. Okay, so apart from the World Cup, now on Tuesday, at least, we talked about it last week, that there will be June 12th Democracy Day uh, with the establishment and declaration of President Muhammad Buhari. And it went well, and officially, President Muhammad Buhari apologized to Nigerians, apologized to the family, which a lot of people were expecting that, despite the honor, he should make a public apology to the public. And he did that, and of course, a lot of people praise him. Now, on that same particular issue, now, on that same particular day, uh, Professor Wale Shoenka, the Nobel laureate, now uh, made a statement, and he was more of the opinion that it was good to honor uh, past leaders and people who have done well in the democracy, but it will also be bad to admire the people who have done wrong. In other words, there should be a whole of shame for bad, corrupt leaders. And of course, that is where we'll begin our topic today on Editors Forum. So now, straight to my distinguished guest, Glenn. What do you feel about the issue of the Hall of Shame? You know we have Hall of Fame. Now, Hall of Shame for corrupt leaders. Well, um, corruption, and the word corrupt leader already means that uh, it's a shameful act. It's a negative tendency, especially among our leaders in Nigeria, political actors. Um, corruption has permeated top down, bottom up. Everything is cyclical. I mean, it's part of the normal existence of many Nigerians. And it started mostly, I mean, from our political leaders, from even the, from the military. In fact, the military took over, saying that there was stamp corruption in January 15, 1966, when they took over. And it found out that they were even worse off than civilian uh, uh, politicians. Therefore, it, we see corruption in the churches, in the mosques, in our community, in our, you know, in, in our, even in our home families. Everywhere, it's, uh, everybody is corrupt. Most people are corrupt in Nigeria. Let me not use the word everybody, but it affects everybody in Nigeria. Therefore, I think we should. That's why when this APC government entered and they were talking about we we'll publish Luther's list, publish Luther's list, we said do it, publish Luther's list, and then that would have been the first point from Hall of Shame. But what would, what did we see? We just see, saw a selection of political uh, of uh, political opponents, and uh, and then they published them. We wanted something more comprehensive. So if you are going to shame your opposition, <coughs> also shame the, the, the people who are the ruling party, so that everybody can be put to shame. If you go to China, they prosecute a lot of their leaders who are actually the political leaders of the ruling class. Most of them are persecuted. If you are just because you're the Republicans are the current leaders in. in United States does not mean that if a Republican is found guilty of corruption, he will not going to be shamed. But in Nigeria here, once you're an APC uh, a member, then you are, you, when you're corrupt, you don't get that. So I believe that every year, every 31st December, let's have a, 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 a list. Let's do a ceremony of uh, <laughs> a hall of shame for, uh, for, for, political, for corrupt people, especially political people. And the government will not be the one to do that. So I'm glad it's coming from the Nobel laureate itself. Himself, he should start it off. He should bring a coalition of the CSOs of civil society organizations, and we should book this and make establish it and make it work. We can involve people like uh, uh, Transparency International, and we can involve other people to bring out a date and say a, a, a day for a hall of shame. They will induct new people every year, every 31st December. We we'll do as assessment from 1st January to 31st December, and then we we'll do uh, a new induction for members of uh, of corrupt people, and then we we'll have a hall of shame. That can kick start at this December 31st, 2018. Okay, now uh, Ambrose is even giving us a date to kick start the Hall of Shame. You know, when we're talking about this, I remember in school, then primary school, where you have awards for uh, if you've done well, they give the list of people that have done well, and if you've done bad, you just see your name. When there's a score sheet there, you're like, oh my goodness, my name is there and I've not done so well. But if you look at this Hall of Shame now, Emeka, do you actually feel that this would um, deter corrupt leaders from actually being corrupt, or it's just going to be? A statement. Well, I don't think um, a hall of shame will do anything. We have seen cases over how many decades, you know, where names were published, people's properties were were seized, and what happened at the end of the day? These same people came back to even occupy higher offices. So, who cares? The issue is this: the country needs to be much better. Nigerians need to feel a better sense of belonging in their own nation. They should, first of all, be treated as citizens. Then, 
when you make opportunities available to the average Nigerian, you will, you will greatly diminish corruption. Let me tell you why it, why it appears that say corruption is so pervasive is because a few have access to the bountiful resources of this country. And why? Because they have access to political power. And so they can do what they like. They feel that the treasury is theirs. And then I always make this argument, when you talk about corruption, is it just about stealing <coughs> money or the entire gamut of actions that are prejudicial to the national interest? Talk about nepotism, talk about favoritism, talk about so many other things <coughs> around corruption. So what I believe is this. If you look at, if you go to the website of the U.S. Department of Justice, I've said it before, <coughs> You see cases they are prosecuting, different kinds of cases across different sectors. You don't hear Donald Trump, the president, singing about it because it is a routine job that we must keep the system clean. You go to the UK, you have the Serious Crimes Office. You have other agencies at different levels fighting graft, <clears throat> fighting serious crimes, fighting fraud all over the world. The duty of government in the constitution is to make the country livable for the citizens. But when a government goes all over the place telling us it's fighting corruption, and then comes out clearly, the vice president, the minister of information came out clearly to say that there are no corrupt people in APC, you know that first of all, that corruption war is defeated, is dead on arrival. It's as clear as that, because why? You cannot make a distinction. He who comes to equity must come with clean hands. But when you come to equity with hands that are skewed, you know, that are set in a, in a way to deliberately favor some people and then criminalize other people, who do you want to believe in your, in your anti-corruption world? Nobody's going to believe in it. So what I believe is that EFCC, ICPC, Special Fraud Unit, should be empowered. In fact, they should be made independent of the president, independent of the National Assembly. They should be given independent boards. They should be given more powers to deal with corruption without looking at whether it's APC or PDP or whatever coloration. Then, the civil society organizations should play their role. You have Global Witness. That is a group that plays a major role in fighting corruption globally. You have Transparency International. But is it a government that is fighting Transparency International? Every report that Transparency International brings out, you know, you, 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 you try to dismiss it, that it doesn't matter. So if you publish a Hall of Shame, like Allah Jalai Mohammed, well, has published a so-called Luther's List, who's going to believe in it? Who? A Luther's List made up of people facing trial? You cannot, you cannot, jump the gun. If the courts have not pronounced that X, Y, Z are guilty of so and so, you cannot arrogate to yourself the powers of the courts to convict people who are still standing trial. That, is, that in itself is criminal. You have to allow the justice system to run its course to the end. So what am I talking about? Take away politics from the anti graft fight. It doesn't matter whatever you call it. Hall of Shame, Luther, this, whatever. Let the courts pronounce. Nigerians are not stupid. Nigerians are not daft. Nigerians are sufficiently educated to know that, yes, these are the people who are the enemies of the nation. And so we must avoid them. If ever they find them their way into the political space, we should not vote for them. Let me quickly add, remember in 1999, there was a case of the, I mean, the case of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Sari Subuare, certificate forgery. But what happened after all said and done? President Obama Sanjo then still gave me, say, say pardon me. So I gave him an appointment. I gave him an appointment. So what are we talking about? So if you put that man on in the Hall of Shame, and next he's pardoned. When he's pardoned, you know the legal implication. You can't call him by that name anymore. Yeah. One, two, he has got an appointment. So we will just keep dancing left and right and not getting anywhere. Okay, let's hear from Victor Oyo.
Yes, uh, <laughs> the first question we should answer ourselves is that who are the people who will determine those people that are uh, going to be pronounced as corrupt people? Okay. Because uh, uh, you cannot just sit in the comfort of your home and say that certain people are corrupt. It is only the court that has the power. Even the president at the first level of the country does not have the power to pronounce any person as a corrupt person. It is only the court that has that jurisdiction, that has that power. So who is going to play that role now to say this person is corrupt or this person is not corrupt? And again, if you say you want to follow the, the court, the judicial system, I don't blame the, the, the judges and the, the lawyer that constituted the, the judiciary because most cases people just blame them that they are the cause of uh, the delay in uh, you know, dispensing justice. It is not so because how many courts do we have? In a country of 180 million people, we have only one Supreme Court. And the, that Supreme Court has only three chambers. It's only three judges uh, that, 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 that sat to adjudicate cases that will come to that uh, Supreme Court of, of, of a country that has 180 million people. Then when you look at all that uh, uh, court, how many do we have <laughs> that are taking cases, that are adjudicating the cases, you know, that come up from a, uh, the, a population of 180 million people? So it is going to be very difficult for you to even decide who is corrupt or not. And again, if we are, if we are able to decide, if the court is able to determine those who are corrupt or not, how is, it that, how is that one going to serve as a deterrent? It's not going to serve anything. And that is why I've always advocated prevention. All over the world, even in China where they execute people uh, for corrupt cases, they are beginning to redefine their structure. What they do now is to prevent because you don't allow people to steal. After stealing so then, much, you use so much money to, to pursue, pursue the cases in, in, in order to convict people. Yeah. I can tell you authoritatively here that we are losing this corruption work. Why do I say so? EFCC workers are smiling to the banks. They are, they are having a field day. Today they are in Germany, tomorrow they are in Dubai, they are in America, staying in the best hotel, eating the best food, on, the, on, on our taxpayers' money. But if we have prevented corruption in the first place, there will be no loophole for people to steal. So instead of talking about uh, uh, having a shame, a, a hall of shame, I, should pre I, should, I will advocate for preventing measure. Even though people don't want to hear about PDP, PDP fought a better corruption war. Why? Because he prosecuted his own members. But what do we have today? APC has never taken anybody to court, apart from uh, Saraki, because he emerged as a senior president against their, their aspiration and desire. That is why we are having, apart from Saraki, which other person of the APC, say former governor, uh, who we are in the PDP that uh, migrated to the APC, which of them, between 2014 and 2015, which of them is starting trial today? None of them. Does it mean that the our angels are sent? The answer is no. So we should forget about uh, creating a hall of uh, shame. It's not, going to, it's not going to prevent anything. Put preventing measure in place, like the BBM. The BBM today with BBM, if somebody has uh, 20 accounts, <laughs> you will know. Before, before the introduction of BBMs, people were have, having multiple account if we have that one side by side with the the uh, tsa then you have uh, the uh, integrated payroll and uh, personal uh, information system that have helped to wither about uh, 500 million ghost worker then you talk about uh, the removal of uh, middlemen from the from the distribution of uh, of uh, fertilizer if we have more preventing uh, policies like that like 20 or 30 i was expecting this government no, you know, that came in, into place with a promise to fight corruption and claim to have a uh, technocrats in his own uh, uh, government to have come up with more policies than we, we the PDP did. Because uh, if, if they claim that they are fighting corruption, they should be able to come up with more policy. But as we speak, they have not even introduced one single policy. That is a very a, a huge disappointment to me. I was expecting them to come up, that every, every month they will come up, with, they will introduce new, new preventive uh, policy that will help to checkmate uh, uh, corruption. They never did that. So the whole, introducing a whole of shame is not going to help us in the fight against corruption. And again, the structure we are running, this structure we are running encourages corruption. We are running a unity system under the guise of federation. In practice, it is unity. But in, on, on paper, it is, it is a federation. I have never seen any country whereby the state, the federal unit, will have the land. 
but what is in the land will belong to another tier of government. That is corruption number one. And with that, uh, with that uh, system we are running, somebody will come from uh, Sokoto under the name of a governor or a minister and go to another place and take people's land, share their oil blocks, share uh, uh, solid mineral blocks to their cells and licenses. There are other countries don't operate this way. And that is why the country is stagnated. You collect the money from the world, from the state, local government area, you push it down to the federal level. At the federal level there, we have less than 1,000 persons. And that is why there is so much money there. And that is why one person will have access to the billions of naira. That is why we are seeing permanent secretary uh, having uh, 45 uh, cars, 50 houses, and so on and so forth. So if we don't restructure the system whereby the state we take absolute control of what they have and pay a minute part of what they have generated to the federal level, the corruption will continue to persist because if you have so much money in the, uh, under, the, uh, under the control of one man, what happens? The children of the rich, they waste food. Why? Because it is the surplus. But when you go to the homes of the poor, they struggle for food. And that is what is happening. There's so much money at the federal level. The corruption at the federal level outweighs uh, that of the state. state. If you look at it critical, critically, it is only the governor that has access to uh, the few money that comes to the state. But at the federal level, once you are a permanent secretary, you have access to huge money, you are head of a service, you are a minister. Today, people are blaming the senators. But the, 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 the executive arm of government is the worst because they control the wet. They are the ones that assign, that assign money to, to the other arms of government, the judiciary and the legislation. So we have to restructure Nigeria for us to be able to overcome corruption. If not, if we continue with this system, we are deceiving ourselves. All right, while we're still hinging on the whole of shame establishment for looters, now on Tuesday, um, the former Plateau State Governor, and that is Joshua Dari, and of course, and John Yemi, they were convicted to 14 years in prison for diverting public funds to the tune of 1.126 billion and a lot of people have lauded this uh, this uh, the, um, development right now but Ambrose, what do you feel about it? do you feel it was too late that the court took too much time or you feel that this development is actually a good one in the fight against corruption well before i delve into that um let me just make a quick comment about the whole of shame we still because we have lost we have lost the sense of shame and so when we say hell of shame is a metaphoric statement saying that there should be a point to condemn it. We should not stop. We should keep condemning it. Because that is why there's corruption. Even if it's due the prevention, if the, someone does not see shame in stealing, then the person will look for any alternative to steal. So that our values, our culture as a people, that where there's shame in the wrong thing should come back. That's why we mean by metaphorical hall of shame. They're going to Dari, Dari's case. This case was instituted by the uh, PDP. And uh, against their own person. Remember, Daria was a PDP, was a Plateau State Governor, and he was a PDP chief. Yeah, and the PDP instituted that corruption case against. That is the difference between this propaganda APC and the PDP. PDP we know is corrupt. APC is corrupt, but the problem I have with APC is that they are painting themselves as saints. We are and not part is. of that. We are not part of that canonization process. Therefore, we are denying it. So we are not. Uh, we cannot do this propaganda thing and say you are saints. Now, it's a case that started 14, that, was 20, that means 2004. Yeah. That means he just left, uh, he, uh, he was still a governor. No, 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 he was still a governor. Yes, he yes. left in 2007. Yes. Therefore, a PDP to <coughs> put a case against his own, his, his own chieftain tells a lot that they, they, were not, they were actually fighting corruption. And then, like Victor said, the PDP is still preventive measures as well, apart from the curative measures. The preventive measure means they introduce the BV, they produce the integrated payment uh, through the payment platform in which civil servants were able to, ghost workers were able to be detected. They eliminated the fertilizer uh, middlemen middle yeah. by giving uh, farmers phones. There was a way they used the phone to, you know, you, you use it to clock in and you can use it to collect your cassava, I mean your fertilizer. Yeah, fertilizer. Now this is, the case has gone on for 14 years. So first of all, we need to commend this uh, judge uh, for doing a great job. And she's a woman. I think uh, maybe we should get more women judges too. Judge Stadio Bukola Banjoko, who has been able to... I hear that she was the same person that also uh, sentenced Glary. I feel proud of that too. I'm telling you. <laughs> so maybe the men are not doing something right. And then, so the women should take up the mantle and start fighting it. But again, this is a clear debate. But again, the APC should wake up. Because in the last, the, the, the Taraba man, the Johnny Yame, the Glari man, and then this uh, uh, Dari case, have all been PDP cases that came over the years. Now, what has the APC done? Nothing. 
Rather, the APC is busy fighting the people who are independent. If you say Transparency International gave a, you know, something about your corruption index, and you start fighting them, that they're trying to bring the government down, what do they start to gain? The statistics are there, you have not denied it. A lot of things are happening under your nose, you have not denied it. The $25 billion on the NNPC, nobody's talking about it. A lot of uh, sleaze that's going on under the government, nobody's saying anything. The money discovered by the uh, SSS, and uh, by the NIA for my DG, where is the, one, the whole money now? The whole thing is just, the more you look, the less you see. So I believe that this is a good one. It's, it's a thought conviction in the space of one month, and it's good for the country. And we hope that other convictions will take place so that Nigeria can have a journey so far. And therefore, we call on civil societies once more to stand up, to go in conjunction with Transparency International and all that uh, global watch and other groups in the, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in, the, in the economic space to make sure that they put the government on their toes. I think the civil societies have gone to sleep. That's the problem. The NGOs, they are nowhere to be found. Have they been compromised? I think we should have that question here. Have they been compromised? Because before, they, they have the street statistics. And then they go before, before the government will come out to say anything already. Yeah, yeah. So we should help the government. The government is cold. We should speak fire into it by the FCSO, civil society organization, coming together and making sure they track the indices, track the money. The Panama Paper Leaks, where are they? That said a lot of people were corrupt. And they brought out their bank accounts to say they should work with WikiLeaks. They should work with other, 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 other bodies that look at corruption index and try to bring them out. They are there for us to see. And then when, we, when the civil society have really persecuted that war, they will have their own list. People will believe lists from the civil society. They won't believe a list from the government. Therefore, by the time we start having that and start telling this man, you stole this <coughs> man, this is how much you stole, this is where it is domiciled in our account is so place. And they will publish those things every day, December 31st. And then there will be an ad, uh, there'll be advice there. Don't vote for this person. Even if the government make attempt to pardon such fellows, we Nigerians are not empowered with information. And we can protest in the street and say, you cannot do this. And when we, it's because we allow the, our political leaders to get away with it. We are so no side. And that's why they can pardon a former criminal, convicted by the court because he's shifting. Somebody's 48 houses were returned to him because he crossed over from PDP to APC. And then we allowed it to happen. And then some people still come online, come on air, come online to defend some, uh, some uh, the secrecies of this government. So our, from now on, we should be able to actually Bring the CSO together, work with them. If you have whistleblowing to do, the whistleblowing is even up, is dead now. <laughs> I had a last man who refused to pay him. So, so I don't know. No, the but it, the last man it was said, paid. He, and then he, he ran away for it was paid. Like, So, what are we even talking about? The other man was arrested for being false whistleblowing. So, if you're arrested for false whistleblowing, what has happened? Therefore, we should stop this chess game. We should just stop being jokers. No, me, no. And we should fix this thing. Man, I even saw him in the newspaper yesterday or so. He was he's there, you know, back to his job. The other guy in the NHIS, uh, the sec the secretary, mm -hmm. is back to his job after being accused of so much uh, so much sneeze. Therefore, we are we are just playing with this anti-corruption fight. And the, the less we talk about it, I think the better for it. They should stop yeah. this media trial. Yeah. They should adjust as Seneca said, look, there are things there are things that are taken. Do your investigation. And the president should stop going outside the country to tell the people that my people are corrupt. Every country, there are people who are corrupt. There are prosecution, there are prosecution taking place everywhere. There are investigation taking place everywhere. So the first thing is, let government stop telling people outside the country are corrupt. Let the uh, police and the SSS do their due diligence and uh, in terms of investigation before going to court so they can win cases. All right, now, now due to a shortage of time, now time is really far spent. But um, recently, um, the SAS, the Inspector General of Police, Brian Idris, uh, said um, they stopped the stop and search ban. They had a stop and search ban for SAS. And if you remember back uh, last year, that was in December, there was a really wide campaign against SAS and brutality against humanity. And um, people have seen this new development as a, a way that the Inspector General of Police has actually heard or listened to the. Nigerians. Let me start with you, Nika. What do you feel about the stop and search ban on SARS? Let me tell you. <clears throat> Go to the website of the Nigeria Police Force. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go to the section on mission and vision of Nigeria Police. Please take your time from the beginning to the end. You will get to where they put the values. You see the values, the top three values. I think if the Inspector General of Police can print this mission and vision of Nigeria police and the values. Give it to all police, give it to every policeman, every policewoman. 
begin from there. If you begin from there, that is the code of conduct of the Niger police. If you even look at the code of conduct of the Niger police, it's, ex it's comprehensive. If you give them this code of conduct and they now criminalize any breach, a lot of the complaints we have will disappear. But when there is no creed, when there is no code, when people don't even know about it, I don't even know how many policemen can recite all the top of their heads, the code of conduct for police. Do they even know anything like that exists? Maybe after they left a police college, how many? Yes, the IG has done well in stopping, um, in saying that unless we're necessary, and that is even conditional, unless we're necessary. So how do you, how do you determine where necessary? Then if you look at what the IG said, everything he said is beautiful, lovely. Oh, that they are going to be trained, they are going to undergo psycho, and psychometric cells. evaluation, they are going to go through their cells, beautiful. I commend the IG for all those things, but my challenge to him is, Mr. Idris, please implement them. If you implement all those beautiful things you said, listen, SAS, the guys at SAS, they face a Herculean task. It's not easy fighting and robbery and violent crimes. It's not easy. The, it's, it's a very, it's a tough assignment. But you see, again, you have to work so hard to make sure that they are not diverted from that sensitive assignment to go collect debts for people, getting involved in land cases, doing other things. You have to make sure. And what is it? If you identify SAS as a critical element of Nigeria police, then maybe you should give them an enhanced pay package. You should give them an enhanced welfare package. It should be separate. So that, and then for you to belong to that squad, there must be certain qualifications, certain training, certain kinds of things, just like the terrorism police, you know. And don't forget like EFCC. Yes. There are policemen in EFCC. Of course, they don't earn the same salary as those in Nigeria police force. So, why not just create some of these departments so that their members are well motivated, well remunerated, and then they will need to be smeared with all these things. Because I feel uncomfortable with all that is going on, you know, about SAS. It, it should not be heard. It's a tough job, you know, that's before them. So they need to concentrate and they also need to be protected. Because you see, let me tell you, if so much emphasis is placed on the misconduct and all of that, it tends to also demoralize, it tends to, tend to demoralize them, weaken them, and don't forget, the criminals are not resting. They'll be happy. But those who are saying scraps us, they have their good points, very good points. But what do we do? We look at <clears throat> this side, we look at this side, and try to marry the two. What we want, ultimately, is a better society. society. All right, okay. now, Victor I and I used to call him the people's man. Now, what do you have to say to me? Uh, well, the uh, issue of SARS uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, troublesome because uh, the, the, the creation of SARS and uh, giving a caveat that they should search people when necessary, that is the problem with our system. <laughs> You create a system, you have said that they should not be searching Chains people. Then you, you now put another card in there that they should search. So they, they, will, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will hold on to that aspect because that is what we give them the money. Mm -hmm. When they are searching and uh, whether you are a criminal or not, because you want to go score free from, the, from, from, from their grave, you give us something. So the, my, my, recommendation, my recommendation is that the, that aspect, that caveat should be removed. Let them not search anybody. Because the world has gone beyond just a uh, stop and search. That is not the way to fight crime. I just returned from Delta State now. We say that uh, eternal, com eternal security belongs to the police. But virtually all our roads have been taken over by, by the army. A whole express, you, they share it, they put, uh, they put uh, drums and fill, it, fill the drums with the sound. And they will stay by one side of the road. Have they become, uh, have they, have they become police? These are the things that are dictating our minds. Where they are needed, they, know they are not there. They are terrorizing innocent people who are traveling on the road. They, they stop, they slow down the movement of people. Why are they, they, why cause, this so? they even cause an accident? They cause accidents. In Delta, so last that is month. the question we are asking. Why is it that everything about Nigeria is always upside down? You have given opportunity. You said that there should not be such a stop and search. 
Then you now give a loophole that, okay, except there is exception. How do you, some, how, how will somebody define the exception that we allow them to search people? This is the question we must ask. So, we, they should scrap that aspect. They should not stop as search. So, uh, security has gone uh, above stop as search. It is about intelligence gathering. Gathering, yes. You sit in the cocoon of your office, in the comfort of your office, you are getting information. If people are planning any to carry out uh, any criminal act, you have already known about it, then you bust it. That is what the world has become. Not in just uh, somebody just carrying a laptop, he becomes an enemy in his whole country. For God's sake, what is a laptop? Okay, I'll have to what is laptop that somebody, eyes. when you carry out laptop, you become enemy? If you carry a sophisticated phone, you become enemy. What is phone? Okay, let's go here from Ambrose. Ambrose. Stop and search van on south. Well, the, 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 I, this is not the first IG of police that have said this. This is not the first, also the second time, first time he's, Mr. Idris is saying it. Mr. Idris has said it before about the police. And as Victor has said, the, the, the what has moved beyond physical search, uh, search, searches, go, what people are talking about preventive crime. Nigeria here waits for crime to happen and then it takes place. I have been arrested one by such operatives. For what? Because I was a CDS executive in my estate. And then somebody went to lay complaint. The next day they came with God talking to arrested the escort. and said, what is wrong with you guys? This is not your call. We have special anti-robbery squad. And so if anything is not robbery related, you are not supposed to come there. So I think they should, in fact, they should stop all the policemen, not only stars, from stop and search. They should put more uh, technology in place to be able to confront people. And the Nigerians should know their right, can always fight for their rights. And sometimes challenge this arrest, talk to a lawyer, no, a lawyer somewhere so that when you get into trouble, you can easily call them. All right, now we've talked about corruption, we've talked about, uh, and of course, the security of lives and property. Now, aside that, Nigeria versus Croatia, I know a lot of people are injured. Now, what are your predictions? Uh, I'm becoming a Martin Luther King, and let me just say I have a drink. But let me have a <laughs> drink. I'm busy. What are your predictions for Nigeria? Well, I don't normally predict, uh, predict figures. All I know that Nigeria will win. Nigeria will win. Yes. Okay, now, still considering, you know, most people are saying that most of the African countries, they fail, the Morocco and Egypt, they've all lost the matches. Uh, I mean, can I still hear from you? What do you feel? Well, I wish I wish the goals all the best. Mm -hmm. I know we have reason to be optimistic about what to expect from them. But I would like to encourage the goals, fly, go for it, win. Because when I mean try to score early so that you can keep your morale up. All right, now so, well I have a dream that Nigeria will win. And that's how we call it a wrap for today's edition of Editors Forum. Thank you very much, Ambrose Bouquet, for being a part of the program. Thank you very much for inviting me. Emeka thank, thank you. For coming thank you, thank you, viewers. Thank you very much. And uh, Victor Aya. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure you also me. wish that Nigeria will win. <laughs> Did they prepare? <laughs> okay, Victor Aya. Yeah, they, they prepared. Oh, they prepared. No, they prepared. I saw them. I saw videos of them. They prepared. They prepared. How many months? No, no, no. They prepared. They prepared. We have prepared. Two months. It's still for a, for a, a tournament of four years. Be patriotic. <laughs> be patriotic. I don't myself. No, be patriotic. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be patriotic. <laughs> All right, so do have I'm a lovely really day. Too. Do have a very beautiful day. Till next time, do join us same time, same edition for Editors Forum. I am Rita Modia. God bless Nigeria. Being objective and impartial is our priority as we bring you the latest news on the front burner. And then we get you to talk about it too. Please join us as top editors analyze stories that made headlines during the week. Every Saturday between 1 to 2 p.m. on Editors Forum on Galaxy Television. Do join us then. expression from creativity craft that speaks of volume an artist and his work galaxy television in conjunction with the national museum of unity ibadan presents arts and craft exhibition 2018 if you're mastering in a form of arts like drawing paintings ceramics photography textiles sculptures jewelry, 
and lots more from Lagos, Akure, Ibadan, and other parts of Nigeria and beyond, register now by sending your profile with an attachment of soft copies of your work to email gtvartandcraft at gmail.com. Art connoisseurs, lovers, and collectors are also invited. Registration 5000 Naira per participant. For more information, call 0701 564 3793 between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Art and Craft Exhibition. Register to be a part.